sorry about that. Oh, that's absolutely, that's great. That's awesome. As a school board member, I can really appreciate that too. That's yeah. just the sportsmanship on the field and off the field is what's really, really important, I think, um, in a lot of things, and what we teach our kids. Yes. All right. Well, good, good evening, everybody. I'm Dave Youngstrom from Yo and Yo CPAs. Uh, this is our third year out here with you guys doing the audit. Um, and my first time actually having a chance to be here tonight. Uh, Christy, who's always done a wonderful job in this audit, is off on maternity leave, so you're stuck with me tonight. Uh, she's all doing well, and she's got a one-month-old as of today. But uh, like I said, this has been a, a really good year, and I think we've got some really good things to celebrate and talk about. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about where we've come from and how we are, and I know you're probably all very versed in that, but I think as an outside auditor, when we came in here three years ago to take on some of the challenges we had, uh, a lot of changes you have made, and a lot of the hard decisions you guys have made to get to where we are today, I think it really will show in some of the, the presentation that I have tonight. So if there's questions we're out, please feel free to ask, and we'll get her started. So I'd like to start out with kind of our balance sheet, our governmental funds. You know, we've got two major funds, our Special Revenue Food Service Fund and our General Fund. And then our, our other funds, non-major funds this year, are really made up of two debt service funds and a capital projects fund. So I'll start, first start talking about the General Fund. We're sitting with about $3.3 million in cash. Our receivables are up about a million dollars, and that's because of an advance to another fund, and I'll talk about that in a second. And then we are owed uh, about $4.2 million, from the, mostly from the state of Michigan and a little bit from the federal government, for uh, costs we're going to we already incurred. So we're going to get paid that over time. Um, our total assets are up about $400,000 this year in total. Our offsetting liabilities, um, we, we have state aid and tax anticipation notes of just under $20 million. We've got a Mesa judgment payable on about 4.4. Accrued salary and fringe benefits related to those receivables of about $3.3 million. We've got about $2.2 million on vendor payment plans, which we've negotiated. And then accounts payable sitting around 4.5. Overall, our liabilities decreased by about $8 million this year. So significant improvement in that area. Um, our food service fund, again, pretty steady there. Uh, cash and a little bit of receivables from the, federal, from the federal government, state and federal government, about $608,000. And just a little bit of accounts payable there. Uh, the big payable in, in that fund is really for equipment that we purchased that hadn't paid for yet. So we had just about a million dollars in that. And Another congratulations to passing the sinking fund. Mm -hmm. um, that's awesome news for the district. That is a great way to maintain your facilities and is really going to help out the district long term. So, and that's not an easy, a very easy challenge in these days. Um, we, we failed the bond this year or last year. It was one of the hardest things we did and there's opposition to those things, but your community rallied behind you and they give you a lot of credit for that. And you take a look at, you can see that third column, we're in a deficit. Uh, we were able to spend some of those dollars in advance of our tax levy. That's the only reason we're in that deficit. We got some projects started sooner with those dollars, so we were able to do that. We did spend some time looking at legal, making sure we could do that, and we were able to do that, and again, that's putting us even further ahead. So really good news in this front. Our operating statement, revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance, a little over $61.6 million in revenues, uh, $67.7 million in expenditures, and some other financing resources give about 14.4. Refinancing some obligations with lower interest rates, saving the district money long term. I've uh, done a lot of good things to get there, and you can see the bottom there. Positive change in fund balance, $8.3 million. That's, that's 20, almost 25% of the deficit you had starting the year. And that's good news. Um, again, there's still work to do. We, we all know that. But I think the, a lot of the challenging things are already be, are, are behind us, and we're moving forward. And I think we'll talk about that in a couple more slides. Overall, our special revenue food service fund there was it spent about $400,000 in total, but most of that was capital related and spending down some of the fund balance to put the improvements we needed within the district. And then you can see our capital projects fund and our debt service funds dropped the fund balance about 2.4 million, leaving us and that whole million dollars is in the capital projects fund. I always like to look at our budget, looking at our revenues and other sources. Um, you can see our revenues came in spot on within a half percent. And again, our, rev and our expenditures came in about 8.4 percent uh, under budget, which is what you want, and especially with the position you're in. Um, you can see that came down from 81 in our original budget, almost 82 million, to 74, to 68 when we got everyone, all the dust settled and we got to the bottom line. Um, and through that, we had really no adjusting entries throughout this audit that were significant at all. So uh, what you're seeing is what you're getting, and that's important to know. 
um, as you sit up there and make decisions, making hard decisions. Yeah. So great results. Where does our money come from? No surprise here. Most of our money comes from the state of Michigan, about 24%, and locally 47% um, in tax dollars for the most part. So we get about, you add those two together, about 71% of our dollars, seven, at least 70 of it coming from state aid. Um, federal, uh, about 21% of federal dollars, and the inner district at 8%. Overall, our local and our state uh, increased about 3% together. Federal decreased about 2%, which is a, we had a lot of Title I carryover we used the prior year, about a million and a half of that is Title I dollars that we spent last year that we didn't have available this year. And then interdistrict decreased about 1%. Where we spend our dollars, uh, probably to know some surprise, we spend a lot of dollars on our people. Uh, you take a look at salaries and fringe benefits, about 55%, and purchase services, about 23%. Uh, salaries and benefits were down about 1%, purchase services down 2 and then our other in supplies were up about 3% uh, this year. Capital outlay was pretty neutral, and again, that's where we're going to have some of that savings in the long run with that sinking fund to pull, pull some of those expenditures for ongoing, repair, for ongoing uh, equipment needs and things we need to do that we used to have to fund out of the general fund. So great avenue. I like to look at it per pupil. Again, we're all about kids and educating kids, and that's what we talk about. So we kind of break down the dollars we're getting per pupil. Um, and you can see the last three years have been significantly ahead of uh, expenditures or revenues. And again, it has to continue that way. So you can see where we were in 12 and 13, and then 14, 15, 16. Every year has been an increase improving our fund position. And this is the slide you should like to see. You can see where 2012 and 2013 was, the, was the, the, where we were the deepest. And in 14 we made some progress. And in 15 we made some more. And now we're almost less than half of what we were in 2013. That's great news. <laughs> and like I said, lots of hard work goes into making that happen. Um, and the future looks good. If we can stay on this path for a few more years, uh, we'll be making some good progress. Uh, there are more hurdles to come, and we all know that. But again, where we were at the end of 2013, and even into 14, to where we are today is uh, remarkably good. A better, better anyway. So that's the financial piece. Let's talk compliance. In 2014, we started out here. Uh, we were new auditors to the district, and we were following some pretty heavy work papers when we came in. Um, in 2014, we had 13 findings. In 2015, we were down to four. This year, we have one, <laughs> which is the operating deficit. Mm -hmm. And I think most notably, there were no federal awards findings on the single audit, the compliance right. audit. Yeah. Again, that's not, that's not light work. No. That's a lot of work. Okay. So under federal compliance, we are issuing an unmodified opinion. No modifications are necessary, uh, just like we are in your financial audit. No modifications are necessary to be in compliance with accepted principles. We tested Title I, which is a, a tough program to test. There are over 70 compliance areas in there that we have to test under the new rules. 70. No findings. Wonderful. So how did we do from a year ago? Okay, we had the deficit, but we made, we made some progress on it. Knocked about a third of it off. Our budgeting, we had some big budget uh, variations last year, and this year we did not. Um, equipment management was a finding under food service, no longer an issue. And then under reporting, we had a finding as well, no issue. So great work. So you have no material, def material weaknesses in your internal control system, no significant deficiencies. What you have is now management comments. We've always had management comments to go along with those deficiencies, but now you have some time and effort to focus on making the controls you have in place even better. And you, you have some, a couple things that we came across this year. We dug a little deeper in some areas this year where we had a chance to. Um, one of the areas is athletic cash receding. Um, though we have good processes in place, and I think we, we looked at what we had there, and again, we think we have good systems. We just weren't filling out the report in the correct manner. We didn't find anything wrong. But again, we have the right, th right the tools in place to do what we need to do. We just need to spend some time and bring those up to speed and make sure those reconciliations are done timely, the deposits are made timely. Um, under activity funds, we have one as well. And again, we focus on a lot of areas where there's cash collected in the buildings. 
Um, we really want to focus on those dollars to make sure that we are being handled properly. And again, like I said, in the activity funds, uh, we have procedures in place. We just got to make sure we're following those procedures because, again, it's been, like I said, it's been a challenging three years. We focused on some big issues and we've, de we've dealt with some really big issues. Now we get to spend some time on some of the, the details, and that's what really this is. Um, Title I school selection. This wasn't a finding, but it's a management comment. Again, something to make the, uh, the system better. Um, our, our, our data we used for the school selection. I uh, was through, through split, split uh, information, so a couple of years. It wasn't the exact right data. had no difference in the determination at all, but we want to make sure we're grabbing the right data. And then again, the, uh, the only comment we have here, we have six comments that were addressed in the prior year. So your system is working. Mm -hmm. Documentation of purchase card transactions much improved, corrected. Uh, we had some issues last year. Purchase orders and personnel activity reports, although there was no dollars going out ahead of those approvals, they were being approved after the fact. Uh, a year ago, and that's not the case any longer. Private school correspondence, you're required under the grants, that's been addressed. Maintenance of effort, we're relying on the, uh, the uh, Oakland schools to do that for us. We're doing it ourselves now, and, we've had, and, we, and we, made, we, made, we corrected that. Our parental involvement has improved as well under Title I and the other grants. Um, that's corrected. And our school-wide plan was reviewed properly, and we're moving forward. So a lot of good news on the comments. So that's what I have on the internal control side. Uh, we did a lot of testing of lots of different things this year. We did some kickback testing. We did some bid testing. We, we dug deep in a lot of areas. Like I said, those compliance areas, there's 60-some 60, 60 things to test in that area. Um, and we didn't really have a whole lot to report of findings. And I'm, I'm, I'm really happy for you guys. We're not without our challenges, though. We do have our future challenges. We're always going to be subject to, uh, in an election year, um, state economic and political condition. What does it bring for the state? Things have been pretty decent in Michigan. What does it mean when it's not? We do have a deficit in the general fund, uh, but again, it's half of what it was three years ago. Our fringe benefit costs continue to rise, uh, really out of our control. Uh, re retirement rates sitting at at least 35%, and sometimes higher. Um, it's really held down by the state, that, that rate. And the state, in addition, paid us $2.7 $2 million for uh, it's called what, Section 147C dollars. That money comes right in, goes right back to the state retirement system. So they paid us $2.7 million for that, and we had to write a check right back to them, send it right back to them. But it grosses up our numbers, and it keeps our rate low. So with uncertain state revenue sources, that's part of the long-term plan to fund the MIPSTERS retirement plan. And as long as that money's coming, we'll probably, we can at least hold our own and plan. Um, and I'm just always cynical as an auditor and uh, just, you know, what's the next political tide turn? And then the last thing is talking about uh, legacy costs. Um, our, our, we have a pension obligation we put in the books last year, and that number is $67 million. That's what we're paying that big retirement rate for. We don't have to pay the $67 million. We pay the rate of our employees times their salaries, but that's still 34% when you figure it all out. So the state paid us $2.7 million extra, market wasn't bad, and it still went up $11 million, our share. And we can't do anything about that, it's a state dictated number. Um, in 2018, uh, the, this, that's just the pension piece, the health care piece comes in play. So in two years, we'll be talking about the health insurance long-term obligation legacy cost, and that number is supposed to be substantial and similar. So those are just some things that you need to be aware of that are coming down the pipe and that we need to just be, you know, again, there's nothing we can do about those numbers that are coming our way, showing up on our books, out of our control, but we need to just be sure that we're understanding that when we talk to our community members. Are there any questions I can answer for you tonight? Trustee. I'll give you a lot of credit. Thank you. Thank you for a great Thank you. I'd be, I'd be remiss, remiss to say that the business office has been just, uh, incredible the last three years that they continue to gain strength going in that direction. So I think that that is really, Cindy and her staff have just done an awesome job. Uh, the first year, I mean, we were, we were figuring it out together, you know, trying to figure out where everything was coming from in that thing prior years. But as we move forward, it continues to get better and better, and I expect only next year to be even better. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Superintendent. First, I do want to commend um, our business department and our um, grants department, Diane and Cindy and all of her uh, team. 
that has um, ensured that they have shared this information on a monthly basis with the board. I also must commend the board for making the tough decisions over the last three years. Um, I continuously share this out in the community. It is not easy to sit in the seats and make these tough decisions when it impacts the lives of children, but you have done that. You have not wavered with your decisions, and you have kept the focus on children first alongside with administration, and we appreciate that. I also want to thank the PSD community and the staff for um, entrusting your children with us as well as entrusting your dollars for the sinking fund. The staff that took the concessions over the last three years and have not made or had any in, um, increases or steps in their salaries. It is on your back some of this to be awarded and thanked and we thank you all for the commitment and dedication and we are looking to give back because we know it is imperative that we give back to our staff at this point in time. So um, we're working hard to make those numbers line up and align to budget out step increases for the staff across the board. And so hang in here with us. We thank you. And we're going to keep on showing up and showing out. Thank you, Yo and Yo, for doing a phenomenal job. I do have one, I have one comment, too. I remember doing my um, thesis in college on our financial system and our internal controls. And t I would have never thought that we would have the report in front of us like I have today. So I'd like to commend our superintendent, who held steady, fast, believed that this district could turn around and was instrumental. Her, our superintendent, our central office, all of our employees who believed in the district and got us to this point. This is short of phenomenal. Thank you, superintendent and staff.